Hi. Um, thank you for having me today, and thank you for being here, everyone. My name is Ye Hwan. I am a designer, developer, art director currently in Seoul, South Korea. So this is my website that I created like two, three years ago, two years ago. And in order to make this website, in order to make this graph on the center, I need to like line up all the projects that I have worked on and projects that I have participated on. And at that time, like I realized that I love working on so many different areas. And moreover, I love like working on some of those like overlapping area. You know, I love like mixing two or three different categories. These days, I, I call myself like designer and a developer. But what I'm aiming to do is not just like handling both like design pro project and uh, handling the process of development. But moreover, my I'm interested in you know kind of mix these two different category and like kind of making something different from using the knowledge of design and using the knowledge of development. So I love like finding a connection between design and technology and you know like I sometimes use the methodology that I use in design and reflect that to the area of development and you know vice versa. So today I want to talk about like interacting with typography but moreover I want to talk about um, some of the practice that I've worked on in order to like find a connection between design and technology which is dividing and reassembling. So if we think about how technology has been developed so far, we can like we can see the linear shape of development. For example, like if someone makes a, make a new smartphone, then people kind of compare if this smartphone is better than the previous one. And they kind of criticize if there's no like huge functional improvement. Whereas we, when we think about design, like we cannot say like modern typeface is functionally much better than the typeface that design like 50 or 80 years ago. But we still understand the value of new typeface because like, it's more about the diversity. Our view to the typeface, typo design and typography is more about the diversity. It's about like finding or like creating a value from what we already have and what we already fully understand by focusing on the details and changing like, uh, making like a small changes and making more different. And as you can see, like it has that recursive shape, you know, like it kind of repeats itself again and again. When we search graphic design trend, then we can see the trend repeats itself as well. So like from this point, I kind of think that what if I uh, adapt, I, what if I bring this uh, recursive uh, shape of practice and bring this to the linear shape of development, for example. Uh, instead of like developing even further, which is already overwhelming for me at least, it's overwhelming. So instead of like developing even further, what if we just sit down and think about what, like what we already have, and focus on what we already have and what we already fully understand. Starting from there, and like, and like thinking about like the device or the element that we already have and think about like divide it into small pieces and think about like what can I make something different using this element. For example, if we think about a website or a device that we use for the website such as smartphone, instead of like improve it functionally, but just think about the assemble it into small pieces and focus on each of those elements. What can we make using this element if there's consider if there's any element that we've never think deeply about? There are so many different elements that can create something different if we just think deeply about. For example, like touch, you know, like touch post, touch like interaction or touch screen or etc. Those touch interactions still be used as a replacement of actual buttons. So it's like a, it's more like a touchable button. But if we start to think deeply about this touch interaction, we can actually walk on the screen. Well, this is a project I call The Way We Touch Each Other in 2020. 
this I created this project from the irony that this touch device and touch uh, touch interaction became really popular from around like five years ago, and then like. Technology technology developed so rapidly, so now we use this touch screen everywhere, every device, and now in 2020, we cannot touch each other in person. Like as if someone already know that this is gonna happen and kind of like let people to develop this touch device, since in the future, you cannot touch each other. Or, you know, what if we just focus on the changeable size of the browser? or just focus on the uh, interaction that we usually use in web map. There are so many interesting interaction when we navigating web map, I think. Or just a scroll bar. Uh, the title of this project is Mountain Effort Scroll Bar, and I just reshaped the scroll bar inspired by the shape of Mountain Everest. I don't know why. And it gets much more interesting if I apply this uh, single interaction to the typography and typefaces. I think there are some of the features that typeface have as a default always, and that always reveals an uh, interesting connection between type and the interaction. For example, I love that types are not just an array of image, but it's it's just it's something that has function. It's something that we can read. And when we read it, it gives us a certain message. And moreover, it's more interesting when type is are somehow distorted and somehow unreadable, then it's perceived as an image. But when it gets readable, then then it becomes like a sentence or a word and give us some some sort of a message. And from that point, I started to create some environment that you just have to do something in order to read the text. For example, you just have to put the scroll bar in certain position to read the text. Or they have to move their body to see the character in the screen. Uh, each of those circles shows a live recording of web camera. And so, and I just put like a small time gap in those like little circles. So you just have to move their bodies to see the characters in the screen. Or this is what I call touch poster. And in this case, uh, it's a web, mobile web-based poster. And in this case, when user interact with the poster, then it kind of distorts the types and make it unreadable and perceived as an image. But when user stop interaction, then it return to the original state like this. This is a website called CCCS. For this website, I use it web cache. Web cache is a, a piece of web data that is saved on your desktop. So whenever you enter the website, your browser kind of download the, all the contents from the server, but it sometimes saves some piece of the data on your desktop. So uh, it doesn't have, it don't have to like download all the data whenever a user enter the same website web repeatedly. So each data that is saved on your web, on, on your local desktop and it is called cache. And since it's safe on your own desktop, like even though there's no Wi-Fi, it still can load the cache data. And I found that is very interesting point. So I created this website, which uh, each of those X shapes on the browser is a different image with a different file name, but I force some of them to be safe as a web cache and some of them to not to be safe as a web cache. So when there is a Wi-Fi, it looks like a pattern but when I turn off the Wi-Fi, then it will only load the cached image and shows the hidden letters. Um, you can also think about layouts as well. This is the website I created for Typo Janchi, which is the typography biennial uh, biennale taking place in Seoul, South Korea. And in order to make this website, I actually created um, 
same website 252 times. So it means like there are same website 252 same websites, but the only difference is uh, responsiveness, which means it looks the same, but if I change the screen ratio, the way it changed its shape is different. And then I slice them into small pieces, pieces and reassemble them and make a full website. In certain ways, it looks like a general website because to all of those, those websites are the same website originally. But if I change the screen ratio, it looks scattered, scattered because all of them have different responsiveness. Oh, this is the website. In order to activate this website, you need to touch the four finger on the screen and then it shows a message below your finger. So this is a project that I'm working on, series of the website that is called Anti-Asia Family. I think, so in order to read the text, you need to like rotate your smartphone and read it like this way. I think this can be an interesting example as well, connecting the layout design and uh, interaction. I also love when typography uh, meets personality. I love when a shape of the type kind of creates some sort of emotion. I moreover, I love when the movement of the typeface or the distortion of the typeface kind of, um, kind of when, whenever we see the movement or the distortion of the typeface, we soon can realize that it kind of attracts us emotionally. And also, like when we think about the layout or the like uh, environment around the typeface, it has that energy that create that makes us have certain feeling. So from this point, I will talk about like distortion of type and single interaction, single like element for the interaction. So it's those elements for the interaction that you can see here. Among these elements. I love touch interaction the best. Because like for me, I think the fact that you use your fingertip and directly touch the image on the screen is so strong and so powerful, emotionally so powerful, and it has like a huge potential. Anyway, so so from this point, I created this uh, touch poster that by interacting, by touching the screen, it distorts uh, the character on the letters on the screen. I also think the sound is very interesting element that I can play with as well. And I think using playing with the microphone of smartphone is kind of interesting as well because smartphone is originally a telephone and microphone is the main core function of the smartphone, I think. So anyway, this poster is a sound interactive poster. And as you can see, like Based on the volume of the sound around this typeface, it changes, it like reshapes the letters on the screen. Uh, 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 you can also think about layout as well. Uh, 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 this is the mobile leaflet that I created for Kaba, a pop up store. And when you enter this pop-up store, there are so many artwork and each of them have their own number. So when you enter this um, pop-up store, you can just use your mobile, enter this website and just interact with the floating numbers on the screen and click the exact number and get more in information about the artwork. This is mobile leaflet as well. Uh, it's the same structure, each of the artwork have their own number and people can search it through the numbers. Uh, I love that when, when I use touch screen, I can actually make an environment that people can write down using their finger and show their handwriting instead of like using already designed typeface. And I also sometimes inspired by the structure of the typeface as well. So for example, this is a series of Hangul posters that I created for a Hangul Design Museum in Korea. So in order to explain these touch posters, I'm gonna like quickly introduce Hangul, which is the um, 
which is the alphabetic system we use for writing down Korean. So basically, it starts from the small, like a square on the center. And we, in order to create a letter, we kind of assemble each element in this small square. And each of those elements represents sounds. So if I want to write it, write like a stronger sound, I just write it twice. And if I want to write it more stronger sound, then I write it twice for the vertical way. So in this poster, the more you interact with this poster represent the stronger sound. And as I mentioned, it starts from the small sphere and it's an assembly of the elements. So this poster, you can interact with this poster and change the ratio of these elements. And also, in order to represent the symmetry of Hangul, I created this rotatable symmetry like cylinder and made a poster using these elements. And some after I divide it into small pieces, I sometimes I reassemble it and make a fully functioning website as well. For example, this is a website I made for Easy Urbino Better Plus Typography Summer School. It's a student, it's almost, it's a website for archiving student output. And each of the students have to submit their output as a PDF form. So in order to like show that massive amount of information, I use a 3D graph directly as a website. And as you can see that like round this side of the uh, cylinder represent the ears and the slices sound, size show, size shows a PDF. And as you can see, like I use it zoom, panning and zooming function that panning and zooming interaction in this slice this side, because I think uh, that interaction is the good tool to let you to let users the overview of the uh, massive amount of information, which we usually do when we are navigating web map as well. And also, this is a website called Digital Canon. It's a website that I created for Lima Media Art Museum in Amsterdam. And for this, this website contains the archive of artists from 1960 to 2000, but also it contains the backstory, curatorial backstory and credits and etc. So I made this website rotatable. So on the front side, whenever a user enters this website, they can see the list of the archive, but also they can like, rotate the website and see, read the backstory, curatorial backstory as well. So this is the site map. And it's a mobile view. And lastly, this is the website for Future School Summer Studio. It's a part of uh, Venice Architecture Biennale Korean Pavilion. So it's about the architecture. So I created like 3D architectural uh, shape and directly use it as a website. So it's a website that contains like a sim simple like, interaction that represents the contents inside. So yeah, um, starting from the website or the device that we already have and that we already use, divide it into small pieces and make it more digestible and create something uh, different or create something something new using those elements. Finding the connection between those single elements and the typography or type. Uh, those those re results becomes a tool, independent tool itself that I can use for further experimentation or my own project as well. But sometimes I reassemble them and make a fully functional website again. So this is the pr pr practice that I've worked on so far in order to find the connection between design and technology. And this will be um, connecting, this, this will be the practice that I will work on in the future as well. Thanks.